Welcome to the Russell Hant Show. Today, I'm bringing you the person that is responsible for me being on Survivor. The guy who told me I should audition for Pirate Masters, which led to my casting on Survivor. I am bringing on a very good friend of mine, Boo, from Survivor Fiji. You may not know this, Boo holds the record for immunity for all individual and team combined challenges. That's including the merge. Now, a little disclaimer. Originally, this episode was produced to be for all only our Patreons whining with wine, but we've decided we should release it to everyone so you can get a taste of what being a patron for the Russell Hant Show is like. Whining with Wine is a podcast series where a guest and I drink some wine and whine about something in our past or that's going on currently in our life. It's way more unfiltered and raw than our normal shows. Boo and I discuss some never-before-heard stories that you're going to love. We will be doing a second part of this episode for our Patreons only. So if you aren't a Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Hans, and you can listen to it and every episode afterwards. Where well, here's my whining with wine with Boo. Boo? That's not fair. What? That's not fair. All time it's is true. winning. Uh, is that a word, winningest? It's not, but I was going to let you be you. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> is that be, me being me or bro, me being Brian? <laughs> or both. That's, that's an inside joke. But anyway, so well, all-time you want me winnings. To, you want me to spell it out for you? I, we need to tell. I'm, I'm the, not the all-time winningest. It, it starts out with the, the single season most winningest. Oh, okay, Sing- in one Challenge. season, you have more wins than anybody in the history of the game of Survivor. Boo, That's right. from Fiji. That's right. Okay, me, tell me boo. how. Super tell- boo. Explain to Super me boo. how. How well, is that? I will say this. Now, um, Big Tom, Big Tom is credited with 17 wins. 17. Uh, I'm credited with 17 wins. However, Big Tom did not participate in two of his team events. Okay. So how can that be on the equal level with me? They can't. They when can't. I competed in all of my team oh, events. Oh, so so does he have more than you? So. Big Tom has 17? No, he has 17. I have 17. Okay, but he didn't we compete in two. total victories. He sat out in two. He, that's correct. So he has no value to that. Well, how come you're so, not on? By the way, this is whining with wine. This is for our patrons only. That's people that actually give me money to to listen to this. Can you believe that? Now, now you're going to learn a lot about the history of me and Boo on this show here, and the history of me when I was younger. Me and Boo, we've been to uh, we started out in junior high, and then high school, and then uh, college. We was in, we was roommates in college, so we have stories, and they're about to be told. So, so back to that. Uh, you're drinking? You're drinking, boo? You got a drink in whining uh, with wine. Uh, wine. I got wine in front of me. Take a sip. I don't believe that. I don't believe it's wine. I believe it's uh, bourbon. No, I, I'm drinking bourbon, but I have wine in front oh. of me. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, and then you I see that? I in my beach house. That's, uh... And, uh, so you, I'm you, allowing her to listen in. You wine, yeah, I got wine in front of you, but you're drinking bourbon. Mm-hmm. We, we're having a... Yeah. We're having a winery sponsor whining with wine. Free wine. Cases of it. Well, is it bad that I, I hate wine? Well, I never hated wine, right? What did I drink in college? No, you, well, you started out with, remember when Damon Beckdale had um, a bar and we were managing? And <laughs> Do I remember? We we were cool. So Do we I remember? Brown on the rocks. Woo! No, remember Brown when I was drinking? Rocks. That was our drink. Remember when I was drinking Patron on the rocks? No, I don't. I don't like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Those are bad times. But let's get back to the story of why you, uh, you know, why you have the most challenge wins. Because I know everybody's like, what? They, they're confused with this. Well, so we'll talk about our past. But let's let's explain that. And nobody hears it's Boo purple. from Fiji has the most wins. Nobody hears that. First of all, it, it, hold on, hold on, Tara. It's not uh, working. So, but, um, first off, people focus on the individual challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just more interesting. 
Okay, so you're combining everything. Team challenges, individual challenges, and all that. You're combining everything. That's correct. But I would I would like to... Uh, How many individual challenges on, did you win? I think only three. Well, that's not bad. I now, only won two. No, it's not bad. Now, you know, some of my challenges were so weak that they were... We had, like, battleship, you know? Guess a number. Oh, you win. How can I win that? You know, that's a total luck thing. Right. So... I, I kept telling them, I said, well, you're going to have some real challenges so I can win. They're like, oh, we're going to have some, we're going to have some. But anyway, it, people want to diminish uh, team challenges. And sometimes, for some people, you can diminish team challenges. Mm-hmm. However, I was a dominant force on both of my teams. When we switched tribes, uh, it was three girls, me, Earl, and Yao Man. Mm-hmm. Okay? A little bitty, 100-pound Yao Man. Right and Earl, who never won one single challenge in his life. Okay. Yeah, he's so, still so, so he's he's defeated. And, Earl's defeated, ain't he? Yes, he's totally defeated. Except <laughs> okay. for the million. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's right. Yeah, he's defeated. All right. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of like Sandra. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, I I, I kind of didn't do great, but I won. So screw you. I'm better than you. So right, right. It, it depends on what what's important to you. Mm-hmm. You know. I would have rather be suck ass in challenges and win a million dollars like like Earl. And I Earl's my boy. Like so Earl I hope you're listening. Would you but rather would you, you have didn't ra- win any challenges? No, would you have ra- he'll listen cuz I'll tag him. But would you rather uh go out there like I did and end up in 3 seasons I ended up with approximately half a million dollars and be who I am or play one time and win That's 1 million? One. That's, that's a hard one. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I think with the amount of money you want in those three seasons, mm-hmm. I could have turned that money into multi million. Right. So my my positive thinking would have said, let me let me not win, but be but have the great experience of being on Survivor. So you would have taken time. that. You would have taken the three season and a half a million. Three season and six hundred thousand. You know, I just did a podcast with Rhino, and he was so passionate. And I said, you know what? I even said this on the podcast. Said, People hey, like you. My story about how, how come I was so dominant. Oh. And you <laughs> can't take away that it was team challenge. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So when we switched, it was me, Earl, who never won a challenge. Okay. Yao Man, who's a hundred pound, you know, and and, uh, and three girls against okay. all guys. And Jeff Probst said, "Well, guys." I don't know what y'all are thinking, but y'all will probably not win another challenge. Wow. Y'all chose all girls wise. You let them choose all guys. How, how is this? How do you think y'all going to win another challenge? He actually said, on paper, I'm saying y'all will not win another challenge. I only lost one challenge after that. I won every challenge when I had a, we said, oh, you just have a strong team. Right. Okay. Give me Earl who never won a challenge. Give me Yao, man, who's tiny. Get you let Dreams, who's an athlete, go on the other other side. Right. You know, have all boys against two two guys who are suspect as far as athletes, athletics and all girls. And we only lost one challenge. Now, yeah, who's well, the common denominator? that's a I'm that's a good argument. But Jeff said we we wouldn't win, but I, with my will, we didn't we didn't lose. Right, and so that's why I give myself more credit for team uh, challenges than okay. you would normally give people for team. Okay, challenges. we'll do that. We'll take it. So a lot of so people I don't know this. This is what I tell people: Russell Hans was the greatest mind on Survivor, and I was the greatest challenge challenge Survivor. Right, and a lot of people don't you know. You know what? A lot of people don't know you how significant I out, I out, I outplayed. Yeah, you outwitted. <laughs> I right. A lot of people don't know how significant you are in the survival world because without Boo, there would be no two-time fan favorite James, big boy, James Clemens. In a row. Back there would back. be no two-time fan favorite Russell Hance. There would be no in two-time back there, back. there would be no two-time <laughs> quitter Colton. <laughs> yeah. Two-time quitter. <laughs> 
So who else? There was somebody else. Who we who we missing? Shannon. Shannon. Oh. <laughs> Shannon Shannon could have been huge in he that game. He could have been huge. Yes. Huge. He kept his mouth shut. He could have been, I mean, huge. Like Bernie Sanders huge. Mm -hmm. Who else are we missing from that group? Well, I feel well, like we're missing uh, somebody. Like Brandon, spin -off. okay. So Brandon we got Brandon, two-time player, Brandon. But that was more you... Yeah, but yeah, but I, if Brandon wouldn't have been there, out if you know, we would have never had flipped off. We would have never had a uh, Willie right, headbutting no, on Big serious, Brother. But we would have never had, had all that wouldn't have happened. My particular hands were specifically on James, dude. I, Russell, you Russell, at first, at Shannon, first, I felt that you Colton. could you was getting James on. And, you know, you were talking about all these people, and you was talking about them in front of me. I remember when it was going down, and I was thinking to myself, why not me? Why not Why not little old me? Well, okay. Because you, you wasn't into me playing at first. Oh, yeah. Any of my friends I want. But I'll, and you should know this already, but I'll tell the viewers. So what, what happens is CBS, um, they just – they'll call – friends of the show like uh, i had just gotten off the show and they have their own deal right they have their own people they want to get on and their characters so they called me and they said look we need african-american uh i said you mean black they said, okay, you mean whatever. blacks uh, like asian come on be real with us yeah asian uh black or or uh uh, uh or they couldn't find or the short that they were or short bald happy. people no, 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 dude, no. I do I do not, not meet you. dude, I do not meet the standard of what they need on that show. Usually it's the I'll tall explain, model. I will explain you later, but not. right now it's it's James. Okay. Right? So okay. because it was like, okay, we need one of those uh, ethnicities. I said, uh, I know the perfect person. You just look at him and it's like, what the hell? You have so much interest in looking at James Clements just without a shirt on. It's right. Even, kind of looks like seal without with a shirt on but without a shirt it's like you can't stop looking at the dude right it doesn't matter it's i'm not saying crazy or whatever it's he's like, like it's a, a great god right right and then he's cool he's got this attitude it's just so okay I, they wanted a black person mm -hmm. i got that for you right. it's just random and so i said he's even got a backstory he's a grave he's digger. a grave digger and he's really a grave digger folks no, he was like, well, he's, that's how I, th feel. I think he still does right. that they now that's actually. how he feels no the motherfucker gets on a tractor and uses a tractor. To uh, he's way he's anyway. weak. Yeah, he don't he, use a shovel yeah. no more. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if he would have, if he would have probably practiced using a shovel, he would have had more. He had stronger knees. He would have been stronger. He would have, hurt. He would have been bigger. His knees would have been. <laughs> his knees would have been stronger, and he wouldn't have got hurt in Survivor. Right. I hurt him. You know that. You know I'm the one that yeah, brought him down. Hurt him, yeah. Yeah. That, friendly fire. That was me that brought him down. I, I just. Bam! Uh, went to the knee. Like the Shame on you. Foot to the final knee. <laughs> you might have made it to the finals if you, if you had him in. Oh, man. If he would have been there, it would have been so funny. I don't know how it would have rolled. you made it but... to the finals anyway. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and you'd have lost. And you I know, used you. By the, way, by the way, I used you and James to get to Amanda. <laughs> she was like, you must be good people. I'm like, Amanda, that's my people. Now, who are you voting for? Yeah. Yeah, that's, Hell a, that's yeah. obvious. So so I so I so I got lucky. Not lucky. They were interested in in a black character. I found them the perfect black character. Who would not want to see James on TV? All right, okay, legend. Great. Is James then a legend? Like, is James a legend? James is by far a legend. Right. Now, he pissed somebody off in CBS last time, but. He's, you know why? Let me tell you the story. But, but, let me tell you the story before we move on to anybody else. Let me tell you exactly what happened in CBS and what happened because I was. They told me the executive from CBS told me directly what went down. He, he was out there, and Stephanie Lagrosa, she. Uh, it was the uh, you know heroes versus villains. She was like looking at him, like uh, you know, talking shit to him, and she bucked at him. You know how you you. Jump at somebody, but you don't hit them. You're just jumping like you're about to hit somebody, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then when she did she that, did you, him. 
She it, flinched. She flinched him. And James said, "Do that again. Do that again, bitch. Do that again." <laughs> So, so like he's all up in it. her fucking grill, all up in her face, like, yeah, do that again. Do that again. And then she just turns around and walks away. Well, all that footage is being recorded. So CBS seen that and was like, oh, James was about to hit a woman. That's what the whole deal was. That's the only thing. And it's like, look, you, don't, you what, you flinching on me? You, you know, what? So he was like. Straight up hollering at her. CBS seen it, and that was the deal with that. J- James is a legend, easily a oh, legend. What? Well, well, yeah, D- James is. He's more than a. Le- he's 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 top ten. I, without thinking about it, I have to go through it. But he's easily top ten. He is the um, black male, young black male. You know. Who's number one? He's the athletic Who's number one, two, and three? Man. Number one. Um, without uh, being in order, um, uh, <laughs> Russell, Rob, and Rupert. Oh, okay. Poverty. Poverty is is. She's right there, right? I, yeah. I mean, it's just that y'all have so, okay. CBS has pushed Rob so hard. He's so big. Yeah, right? of course. You and him. You and him vie for top. Um, and Rupert just such a recognizable character. So y'all three are just so recognizable. Uh, poverty might not be recognized on the street today like she would have during the heyday. Right. You know what I'm saying? But y'all are always going to have that iconic No, look. no. Poverty, so, she won't be recognized on the street, but poverty in the survivor world, she's in the top five. For for survivor yeah, world. She, she, not may, be, be in a, she, she may be she, in the top three She's or not four, iconic. Like, I'm talking... Uh, a name in the house, but well, she may be a somewhat name in the household, but you won't be able to recognize her on the street. Usually you will well, be able to recognize you know, for different reasons. Richard Hatch, Richard Hatch for different reasons. You see, people uh, tell me that. And it's so I, hard. Hey, look, people tell me about Richard Hatch all the time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He's a legend. Cause he was the first, uh, Oh, the first to do an alliance. Like who wouldn't think of that? An alliance. He was, no, the f- but, but it doesn't matter in the lore of, things he's a legend because he was the first pioneer. that's the he only that reason guy. and just I would, because he might not have been the you know it's his like gameplay would never work today his gameplay it showed right, when he played all stars let's bring this to the mma and, and say okay you have legends yeah we know we're going to uh, talk about mma at the tito. end of the show yeah well, i'm just saying you have a legend in tito uh, or horse gracie right he was a legend he's a legend he will right. always be a legend but can he survive in today's world? No. Right. And right. That's Richard Hatch. Okay. That's Richard Hatch. He was by far, he's the reason, right? And then the second coming was Russell Hand. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't. I, I changed the game. I was a game changer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, say, there's that. As far as gameplay, okay, uh, Boston Rob is not a legend. He had one. He had one great season. That one. was given to him. No, no, no. No. He, he earned that one. Now he well, didn't he, have help back then. He did, he did a good game. Series. He played a good game. But but when? they set it up to where he could play I'm it a lot that easier. That wasn't a great season. No, it was a, count. it's one of the worst seasons in the, in the history of Survivor. No, I'm saying for gameplay. I'm saying his great gameplay was uh, All Stars. Well, people don't realize that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, his game, All Stars. That's was his gameplay. That was his. The uh, other three, I discount wholeheartedly. I say he's right. tough. His first Year time. Two. His first time. I I like to say judge someone on the first time they're pl- they they've played. Well, Boston Rob didn't well, make the worked. jury. <laughs> he didn't make the what jury. What if you sucked your first time and you did great your second too? Which well, I wouldn't be thing. saying that then, but I can mm-hmm. say that. But <laughs> but it makes sense when I say it though, don't it make sense? Yeah, it, it, it's a total different game uh, when you go when you go back. So, yeah, yeah, so the first time you play is how you judge them. And poverty and Rob did not make the jury the first time they played, and and Rupert will always be in the final, you know, seven, because <laughs> just because. But anyway, what you think? Yeah. And you, and you, you, I heard one of your podcasts before, um, 
sexually oppressed by your podcast. I just you. you need to cut it talk closer. But boo, I can't hear you now. What you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's better. I moved my mic. Don't move the mic, man. Um, that's the oh, that's the bad. That's that. bad for podcast. Okay, go ahead. Can you didn't you realize me? how good I was. Can you, hear me? you didn't realize how good I could be. Are you kidding me? Is that a joke? Wait, I don't think that's. I don't think that's what I was saying. <laughs> wait, I forgot. No, wait. Dude, have let's drink say. Wine? Let's go Were back. You lining with Russell. <laughs> let's go back to college. This is the fun part. When I talked yeah, let's to go. right when, now, when I talked, let's yeah, go. hell yeah, let's go. When I talked to <laughs> Terry and Troy, and if I, Frank, when he was he was living, or one of our good buddies just passed away, and uh, God rest his soul. But when I talked to, if we go back and talk to Brent, Terry, Troy, uh, you know who am I? Lloyd can't miss. Lloyd's always on the last one outs. And I'm, I'm gonna tag them, get them, to li- <laughs> get them to listen to the show. But when we talk to these oh, guys, you know, Terry and Troy would. oh yeah, when we talk, when I talk to them, they're like, "Hey man, Lafayette, Louisiana, that's going to college there is the best times of my life." Let me tell you something. I did all this in my lifetime. I've spent so much money in such a short period of time. Two years. Two years? <laughs> so, but two years. so when you go back. And it's like the best times of my life was right there. I remember poets, you know, being a bar back and drinking, you know, getting way low, way low, and drinking behind the bar while we're cleaning up. Remember that? Remember that night? And I got Terry or Troy, probably both, drunk, drunk, where they can hardly do their job. Remember? No. You don't remember? I was working at another bar. Oh well, you missed. Uh-uh. Yeah, you I didn't missed work it. with y'all. You missed that. That was a that was a good one. That was a good one. Then they had them well, girls. Plenty of good ones. Oh, they yeah, but but weren't was that the best times in your life, college? Yeah, probably. And and I, I asked Terry, I asked Terry or Troy, one of them. They they're twins, so it's like ask when you ask one, you ask another. I I said, hey man, uh, when you seen I was on Survivor, could you was you like? Surprised, and he was like, "Hell no!" I was like, "Of course, oh, you would have been the one on Survivor." <laughs> and the way you acted, yeah. yeah, we knew that would happen. Like, how do y'all get yourselves into this shit? <laughs> like you and Boo, we just, on TV, we just get into shit. Because <laughs> me and Boo were it's the like one the- causing havoc in college. Hey, we didn't do drugs. We it was we stayed away from that stuff, but we drank, and we we had a good time doing it. And uh, we were the two. That were the troublemakers. Like, what movie could you come up with that it would but be? But not me bad and you? trouble. No, you know no, no, no. We were more mischievous. Yeah, mischievous trouble. of course. Fun and, trouble. Yeah, we'd never gotten any, any serious. Yeah, where we did, but but that's another mm-hmm. that's another podcast. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, but they would be like, well, okay, Russell and Boo, of course, and then we were the two that ended up on Survivor. So they had the thought that was pretty funny. Oh yeah, I. Re- I- and you know, you know the story how I got on Survivor. So, Krista Segal from Big Brother Two uh, brought me in, and uh, we were going to the Big Brother finale for All Stars, and we were weren't supposed to be there, but we were in a limo dropping a, a guest off, and she was on the list to get on the CBS lot. So mm-hmm. we they let us in, you know, because she was on the list. Oh, that's a big thing. Off. Big we Brother Two was drop. a big deal too. Yeah, we we told them to. Well, it was. Yeah, it was an all-star show where, where Boogie and Will were in the finals. Well, right. anyway, uh, so we told the limo driver to stay, and he he stayed. So, all right, so he stayed. We're just watching people. And Kristen knows these people. I don't. I'm clueless, you know. I'm just like, oh wow, I'm on the CBS lot. Well, we sneak into this building that we thought, you know, we saw uh, people that she knew go in, and they're like, oh, y'all here for this? Y'all fans of the show? Uh, we're, we're gonna seat y'all. We're like what? Yeah. So they sit us. In the front row, right behind Julie Chen, uh-huh. and I'm, I'm like, what? I'm getting text <laughs> messages. What are you doing on TV? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that's how. That's how. Just this. How you get involved in shit? You just do shit. You know. Right. We. Who's gonna say? Well, let's let's tell the limo driver to stay on the lot. You know. Let's try to sneak into this random yeah. door didn't we she, don't know where it would it lead to didn't she let it get the best of her y'all it was trying to get in a club or something for all of us. 
Didn't she Next try to? What? But didn't she try to get in a club, Krista, or something? And she, like, she let that whole thing get the best of her, and she's like, "Do you know who I am? Did that really happen?" Oh yeah, we were in New York with my finale, and, and we were the the guy. He just wanted to see our IDs. It's not like he wasn't gonna let us in. <laughs> and she's like, first off, she put it off on me. Right. She embarrassed the crap out of me. She's like, "Do you know who he is? I'm in New York, okay? I was a, I was on Survivor, okay? I, I wasn't like Brad Pitt. Do you know who he is? He was on Survivor. He's like." I just need y'all's IDs. I don't even know what the Bible is. <laughs> like, oh God, how embarrassing is that shit? Oh Jesus. shit! You know, I I but, let that shit get the best of me too, dude. I, I you know I let it get. I got a little too much. I don't even drink Patron anymore. Well, you are more than Krista by far. So, <laughs> right. I, I mean, at least it, it's understandable. No, but you know? let me tell you what I did, and this, and I would never say this publicly, but I'm gonna tell you. No, you probably know. I probably, I probably already told you. But but it's just for our Patreon, so we only have like 40-something of them. So that's only 40-something people here until we get bigger. So Are you when we, me for the large The audience? third time I played, it's a good story. Third time I played, we was getting off the planes, and I had a handler. Now, what they were doing was they separating everybody, me and Boston Rob. Boston Rob had his own handler. He got in a, uh Got in a taxi and went his way. I had my own handler. I got in a taxi and went my way. But the cast was already there. They were there in Ponderosa. Me and Rob wasn't at Ponderosa. We had our own. So we rode with the crew. Like the whole crew. Like the film. The they were they were taking off the cameras and all this stuff when you know, when we were getting off the planes. So I'm sitting there and my handler comes up to me and he says, Russell, he's like, I'm gonna be your handler. And, he's, and, he, and then he looks at me and he says, if you have anything, give it to me. <laughs> so I'm like, and by the way, I can say this because he's, he's been fired probably for obvious reasons already. So uh, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to say his name, but but uh, so he doesn't work. If he still worked there, I wouldn't be saying this story. So he's like, give it to me. So I'm like, okay. But I had to get it. You know, I had all my luggage, so I had to get it out my luggage. So what I had was two full you know the big the biggest water bottle you can have right the big big one i had both of them full yeah. of patron two of them so where'd you get the patron i bought it in texas and i put it in my bag <laughs> so Wait, I, I thought you were oh this was before the show yeah this is at ponderosa like we are about to start the show this is oh, before okay. before I before yeah I got you. yeah so i thought it was coming home okay, okay no so he's like uh I filled, you know, I filled it up at home, put two big bottles, and I smuggled it across the countries. And then when we get to the, you know, the the station, he's like, so now I'm like, I have to get the Patron out, and I had a backpack with me, and I have to get my backpack, and then I have to get it to him somehow, because he said they're gonna go through your bags, and they've never went through my bags, they've never, two, you know, two times of play, and nobody touched my shit, uh, you know, and I don't like that, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So I get, I go to the bathroom. I hurry up, and I I need to go to the bathroom. So I roll my luggage all the way to the back, you know, the one that the Patron was in, and I knew exactly which one it was. To the bathroom, I take it out real fast, put it in my backpack, and then I'm like, okay. And then while we're in the, I have he's in the front seat, the taxi driver, and I, I'm in the back seat with another handler uh, next to me. So she can't know what's going on, and she still works for uh, for casting. I'm not going to say her name either. But uh, so so I take the water bottle, looks like water, out my backpack, and I start drink, acting like I'm drinking it, you know, and it's straight Patron. And uh, then I, ha- I hand it to the sideways. I see her on the phone. I hand it to him, like, uh, you know, uh, by the window on the right, and he's in the front seat. I'm in the back, and he grabs it, and he takes a little swig and <laughs> realizes what it is, so he puts it in his bag. And then I have another one. He don't know. He don't know I have another he one. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, I got to get him the other one. <laughs> so I'm like, I take. And by the way, CBS, if you're listening, I'll never drink again if I do your shows. But uh, that was that. That was then. This is now. I'm, I'm different now, man. Yeah. I know this is whining with wine, but but I'm way different now. I Wait, how do does that. CBS hear this? 
if they how does they they have to join? Just... They have to join. No, right, but they they're not. They can see your back episode. Oh, it, if somebody tags them and say you need to listen to this, they got to give me money. <laughs> so okay. So they we gave got you a lot. Well, yeah, they already gave me a lot, so they I probably let them join for free. <laughs> so so anyway, I have to get the other one to them. And I can remember him looking at me like, "Are you kidding me?" When I put I, I tap him and I like have the bottle next to him, and he just looks back and looks at me like, "Are you shitting me? You got, how many of these you got?" Because they were big, and uh, it was like it was like three bottles that fit in those three things, and uh, yeah. So he and he grabs that and he puts it in his luggage. So now we head to Ponderosa. And it's just me and him, dude. They would they bring us our food. It was just me and him for five days. But we had to, we wanted we wanted the right day to to, uh, to do our stuff to drink. So we wanted a good, you know, a good day. The first day we didn't drink. The second day was like, you know what? Let's just drink, man. Let's just get drunk. We ain't got shit to do. It's Friday, <laughs> and it's time to drink. So we we pop it. We you know we. Don't pop it. We just unscrew the bot, the the top to the water bottle, and we start drinking. Well, we didn't know this, but that's the day that they decide to come and check our luggage. Now, you know how I, you know how I am when I, I'm fucked up, dude. I'm drunk on Patron, oh, drunk. Shit. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> so they're gonna come check our luggage, and I don't know who the fuck they are, and they're these big security guards. Big boys, you know, just come at three of them walk up in there and say, and they straight up, I, and I was aware of exactly what was happening. They walk up in there and they say, we need to go through your luggage. And I'm like, what? Because, I, you know, I was confused because they didn't go through my luggage season 19 or 20. We need to go through your luggage. And by the way, this this is the whole deal with Russell and CBS and all that stuff. This is what happened with me, what people say, oh, will Russell ever play again? Which I will because I got invited to do the Candy Crush thing. And, you know, it just didn't work out to do that. But anyway, uh, I think they, it, by listening to the, all my shows and stuff and seeing that me, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So what happened was they, they went into my luggage and I'm like, look, look, no, they went to my room and I'm like, no, you ain't going through my luggage. Straight up, you ain't going through my luggage. I don't know who you are. And I didn't have nothing in them. I didn't have nothing in there. We already, we were drinking it. We almost finished it. And I'm like, you, you just ain't going through my shit. I'm not in prison and you're not going through my shit because I felt like I'm being locked up, you know, Oh, we going through all your shit. You locked up. You stay in that corner while we go through your stuff and frisk you and everything. I wasn't going to allow that to happen. And I would have a problem with that sober. But I was drinking Patron. And I said, no, nah, you ain't going through that. You you ain't doing it. I said, you better get the fuck out my luck. Like it got to, it got to that point. And then I went up to, I got the biggest, tallest one, Samoa guy. I walked up to him and my eyes met his lips <laughs> right so and i'm like and i'm like like millimeters away from his lips <laughs> and i'm that you were clo- really close yeah willy close <laughs> willy willy close willy the joke close i was willy willy close <laughs> so so uh <laughs> so i get up to him and i'm like my eyes are t- almost touching his lips and i say you got some pretty lips boy <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got some pretty right. lips, boy. He, I seen his say? face expressions change completely. Like he was like, like tough guy comes to hold. Oh, holy shit, this guy's something's wrong with this guy. So I'm like, you better get the fuck out of here. Like I'm, I, I like I'm getting aggressive. Like this, this is about to get real. Like for real. Like I was in that zone, and all of a sudden I'm hearing on the radio, podcast. Uh, podcast. I'm hearing uh, uh, Ponderosa number two, Ponderosa number two, security to Ponderosa number two. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, every single Ponderosa and radio from the main Ponderosa with all the cast members. Boss and Rob's Ponderosa and my Ponderosa, everybody's here in the radio because they all on the same channel. And 
and I'll tell you what they said afterwards about me. Well, they, they were like, the ones that knew me were like, why is somebody there going through Russell luggage that he does not know? Like, we all know Russell's aggressive. How come somebody that we, like, Caitlin, you know, or somebody like that going through, Lisa, you know, why ain't they there going through my shit? I wouldn't have done that to somebody like that. That, you know, it's, I, I felt attacked but because people well, going through my shit that I didn't even know. That's why you all play, because they see the same aggressiveness that Brandon showed on the show. Right, right. I guess that's why. And so that so they're one so but still uh yeah. we've get we've gotten calls for several different things and uh but no this is what happened this is why it went down to CBS's level because an executive for CBS shows up because they call him facts of security the head of security shows up the executive shows up thinking she's going to calm me down and she's like Russell, we just need to go through your luggage. And I'm said, and I'm like, they never fucking went through my luggage before, and who the fuck are you? I didn't know who she was, but come to find out she was like a main CBS woman, not SCG, which is Survivor. She was a main CBS woman. So then it's like, oh, shit. I didn't know, you know. It got to a point to where that would of obviously, it would, I just don't drink that much anymore. I used to drink all the time. If I, you know, I might have a glass of wine doing this show, and that's it. I mean, besides me having a glass of wine now, a glass of wine or two doing this show right here, uh, I don't drink. So anyway, do you know? Do you know that that girl? Oh, the executive? No, CBS? no. Yeah. I've seen her. If I seen her again, I would know who she is. But uh, I seen her walking around the office. But I didn't know. I didn't. You should find out who she is and email her. Well, that, you know, it's that was also, you Ask know, her. I let I all that, her. I did no, let all that get the best of me. I did. And I was drinking Patron. Oh, they yeah. shouldn't have never let, allowed me that. to take Patron. They should have had Caitlin or Lisa or somebody like that going through my luggage. And those are casting girls going through my luggage right when I got there, you know. And that's the only time I ever brought anything, and it was alcohol. So what? You know, I wanted to, I knew that I was going to suffer. And, and James did it in uh, Heroes versus Villains. He handed me a shot of something. So, yeah, everybody does it. Except, you know, everybody doesn't act like the ass. That's not the problem. The problem is that you got caught and that you were so aggressive towards towards uh, production. Right. Yeah, so but, eventually they went through my luggage uh, when when I calmed down. And my handler would be like the whole time we had another four days or three or four days, he would look at me and say and he would say, Russell. I look at him and he said, You got some pretty lips, boy. <laughs> so so every time he seen me, he would tell me, You got some pretty lips, boy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So does that sound that's like awesome. me? Oh yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> hey, so since it's your your I was gonna save this. Anyway, I, want, I, want I apologize. Anybody involved that was listening to that and that was involved, actually involved, I apologize. You with the pretty lips. You did have some pretty lips, but I apologize. No 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 harm, no foul. I didn't hit nobody. It went well. They all went through my luggage. You CBS, whoever was there, I apologize to you too. It was a, it was yeah, stupid, you never played again. stupid, stupid ah, decision. There we go. And then I never played again. You think you will you play on legend? Uh I mean, what if this podcast is doing extremely well? Should I play? You should play on Legends. Dude, what if this podcast is kicking ass? Game changers. That's more of a of a have to. If Okay, you know how you feel slighted because and a lot of fans feel slighted that Russell Hans was on Game Changers because you were actually the only real Game Changer. Right, right. But <laughs> right. you're more of a legend than you are a Game Changer. Yes, So I agree. Um. Yeah. Plus, I think that CBS just needed a break from the hands. I do too. Or, or I do too. Five, five. What, what's five? Uh, philogy. A uh, philogy. It was uh, three fi- of you it's followed a fi- by two of. It's a philogy, right? Philogy. Yeah, we'll go with that. So <laughs> right. three of you and two of Brandon. You know. Right. It's just, and Willie. It's just a lot. Well, Willie was CB was still CBS, but it wasn't Survivor. Right. I think Survivor says. They don't look. Man, if I played again, if if I literally played again, they would see such a change in me. I mean, they would see such. 
Man, well, I, that that shit. I I have those. You're talking about cat though, things that two or? years. That two years. I played three times in a year and a half. Those two years were a fucking blur. Like literally. Oh, I know. I could see it in your eyes. It was a blur. <laughs> Every every but day was they, a blur. They put all their eggs in their basket because the show was over at twenty. That was they were, boom, we're out at twenty. You had so much uh, viewership that they were like, you know what, we're gonna keep the riding this. And they rode your. They said we we got Russell Wave. We're gonna bring back the Boston Rob Wave. Now we're I had a it. main woman uh, from CBS. I know her name. And, but I'm not going to say that either because I just don't like to call anybody out. She came at me during Brandon's season, and she walked up to me while I was waiting to go out there and said, Russell, I want to tell you. season, the first or second? Uh, Brandon's first season and with that with that girl, Michaela, out there. So, uh, the, the, so she came up to me and she said, Russell, I just want to tell you, we couldn't have went past 20 without you. And I was like, you know what? That means a lot to me. And I didn't know how much that really meant to me. Until later. It's like, you know, I respect that. I, I need, all I need is respect. You respect me, that's okay. That's why going through my luggage thing, that's not respect. Like, you're going to go through my shit? Like, I ain't got nothing in there. That's lower level. That's lower level. And that's where you made the mistake. And it, it was, you didn't realize who you, what you were doing or who it was. But you disrespected a high-level CBS executive where you thought you were just, Defending your property right. against low-level shit. Because I remember trying to get you to make a, you and I both a lot of money with the Russell Got Screwed shirt. Right. And I said, all you got to do is take your your dress shirt off with the Russell Got Screwed t-shirt underneath. It's going to say RussellGotScrewed.com, and uh-huh. we would have been rich. Because you would have gotten so much play on RussellGotScrewed.com. Think about if you would have started a podcast back then. Oh, God. your first season. But it wouldn't have been... You would be making... No, I don't think year. so. You know why I don't think so? Because yeah, I would have been a. It would have oh, been so crazy. Rob Cesarino has a no. Show. Listen, this is why. Was this never is. Nearly as let me as let you. me finish. The reason I wouldn't have been successful is because I would have quit. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have finished it. I was too much. I you know I was out there, dude. I would have been drunk all the time. Oh, well, I was. It would have not maybe. not because of me wanting to quit because I'm a quitter. Just because I would have let it. I would have just let it go. Just, just I would have like fuck that. I don't Out need that. That you know, that's the reason. Now so I'm much focused. Money. Now I'm focused. Now, now yeah. it's different now. Well, well, you had the point was that you you had a lot of respect for the higher ups. You would not disrespect Jeff at that point. You would not disrespect. Um, nope, I told you um, I wouldn't do it because of that. Lynn Lynn Spielman, but but like all the handlers, all the. The, you know, Noel, the, uh, Lisa, you would, you would give them shit. You would give them trouble. And, but you would it wasn't never that cross much that trouble, line with the other two. Yeah, but it, it was, I never trouble. gave, yeah, I did my little thing. That one time, that one time, you weren't threatening. <laughs> Boo. Them. That one, let's tell the story about that one time. And, uh, uh, the third I time guess. I played, I didn't I give a fuck. I, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I ain't going to the live show. So I'm there in L.A. Me and Boo, me and Boo are, we got two beds, of course, and we're sleeping. And then we're in the same room. And they, and they, uh, they, I'm like, well, you're like, don't you got somewhere you got to go? You're hungover. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungover. And you're like, don't you got somewhere you got to be, Russell? I'm like, fuck it. What did I tell you? Ah. Uh. I don't remember, but you weren't going. They kept, they kept, kept, kept calling, kept calling, kept calling, and then you were like, "Fuck them! I'm not going." I'm like, what? "This is the live well, show. On. These are your. They're being nice. You were just mean, yeah. right? And you became a caricature of yourself, which was what they wanted. Right. They created a monster. You became the monster they wanted, and then you you continue that, but. But you would not cross that line with Lynn Spielman and nope. Jeff Probst. Nope. You were always respectful. And I'm like, Russell, you walk around, you talk shit to everybody, you, you, you're this big monster everywhere, but you can't even take your shirt off in a live show. You're right. Russell Hand. Right. But, but that just showed me that you were highly respectful of Jeff's position and Lynn Spielman's position. Right. A lot of people don't see that. But I think they, they kids, have to see that. Uh, I mean, Lynn knows I respect her. You no, know, Jeff, they got it. They got to know. Maybe. That. 
And I'll tell you what, I was going to say this earlier, but I got off track uh, when you talk about Lynn and, 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 and you feeling uh, vindicated for, for what you've done for the show. Um, I remember going to one of the finale invites for your show, and I, I wasn't on the list. So I was sitting outside, you know, maybe I'll be able to get in some right. kind of way, just like I normally do, right? Just right. You normally do. We just get in the shit. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, Lynn Spiller walks out, and I say, hey, Lynn, what's going on? She's like, hey, what you doing? You you trying to get in? I'm like, I'm like, well, yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't on the list, but Russell went in. He's like, She said, you know what? You got Russell hands on. You deserve to come in. Hell yeah. So she walked around. Wow. She, she made her grandmother sit down in a bitch, and she walked me in and told the guys at the door who she was, and she said, I want him to get in. Wow. She took time out of her, you know, she's a busy That's woman. That's pretty impressive she's for Lynn to do that. Sit. Right. It, it, that shows me that she's, one, a very kind person that's thoughtful, that you're not going to get that in the business sense because she will flat out tell you, right. you suck. And you Lynn Spillman, just to let the, uh, let the listener know who she is, she's the casting director of Survivor. She's the boss. And Robin Cass she decides is the she, casting director of Big Brother. Sees. Right. She decides. And they can't tell me. It's yeah. funny, dude. So, when they when they try to tell us stuff like, uh, I'll do my best. I'm like, Lynn, really? You, if you want, uh, if you want a nobody, if you want somebody, the boring, the most boring person in the world on the show, they getting on the show. Yeah, you got to prep them. They, they'll tell you what they want. You yeah. know, just like uh, Shannon, uh, for his show, he was he was a little bit too aggressive. He said, look, we, we, we're casting you as a as a family guy. We need you to talk more about your family and your kids. Right. So when you go into the CBS interview, let's do that. Let's focus on that. Right. We love you for who you are. We know you're going to be great. Anyway, so the point was Lynn Spielman, uh, even though you can't tell, She's a very thoughtful uh, person, uh, and she showed me a lot when she took time out of her day, That's out nice, of her night. Man. She was leaving. She she got me in, and she said, you know what? You, you got us Russell Hance, which also, on the other end, shows that part of how much she appreciates Russell Hance, which he, what, what he brought to the show. Right. So it told me a lot in that one instance where she took time out for me. I don't know why you didn't to. text me. I'd have walked off the stage. You walked up there and said, well, come on in, Boots. I come probably in. was. You, do you remember you said you was hating and you was rolling? You wouldn't even invite me to all the free shows you went to. You had free <laughs> guests that you could get, but you were flying in women from all over. Oh, yeah, that that's when, friends. yeah. Yeah, but that's, you were there, right? Where? At the, oh, you went to all where? of them. What you talking about? I went to the finale, but you got to, invited to do you know, um, Russell Hance to all these charity events, and they flew you and a friend in, and you would never fly me in. They never you? flew a fly friend a in with in. me. I made Whatever. them fly a girl in. They wouldn't have flew you in if I'd have said fly boo in yeah. with me. If Russell Hance said it, they would have done it. Well, maybe. <laughs> anyway. Well, you're, that, that was my a, point about a piece this. of punani is much better than a, a hanging dick. I'm just no, saying. No, it's it's at that it's, time, it was. Hell oh, yeah! It's the pursuit. It's the pursuit and the and the camaraderie you have with your friend trying to get the punani. Because if you needed punani, you could just pay a hooker. <laughs> I don't want to pay a hooker. I don't want a hooker. Anyway, I'm not Johnny Fairplay. So I, I want to give your bam. I wasn't going to do this on this show. I was going to do this on 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 the show where uh, you have all of your listeners. But because it's your special viewers, yeah, we can do it again. Tell... We can do it again on all the listeners. I'm right. Not, I'm just right, not going to talk gonna about the so Ponderosa what stuff. No, no. What I want to tell your your special viewers tonight is a, is, a, is one of my great Survivor stories. Okay, Let's and it. it's a it's an inside story. Nobody knows. It's a great story. Okay, and um, so what? So I'll, okay, so I'll go ahead and tell the story. Is that okay at this point? Hell yeah, go. Okay, so to all of Russell's supporters, his special supporters tonight, this is uh, this is one of my favorite stories to tell, um, and and the name of the story. Do is, I know this story? Uh, probably so. 
Okay. Maybe. I don't know. You got a name for your. St- anyway, you got a name for your story. Yeah, the name of the story. The name of the story is <laughs> a mango saved my life. Who? A mango. A mango. Oh, okay. Yeah. A mango saved yeah. my life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it was four mangoes. I know this story. A mango saved my life. That's the name of the story. Okay. okay so, I, I got kicked off, and uh, I was banished to Exile Island. Okay, so on my show, Exile Island was a three-day event. It was a long time. Mm-hmm. So the, the challenge that I lost was where I tore my ACL, and I popped popped my ACL, and it was like a, an hour-long challenge in the mud of running and trying to catch a ball. We right. worn out, dried, crusty mud. I had a torn ACL, right? Right. I'm dying. I get off. I get off the boat to go to my exile island by myself and it's this beautiful beautiful sunset in fiji it's amazing and the guys looked at me the the film crew and they said hey man it's a beautiful sunset um why don't you walk over there way over there and walk back it'll be a great shot (laughs) right of course normally i'm I'm accommodating i'm like Mm -hmm. are you fucking kidding me i'm about to die okay I've been in a 45 long... I tore my ACL. I'm going fucking sit down. <laughs> and they want you so to I go out. So I go and I sit down. Right. So, yeah, they couldn't say that. So I sit down, and you know, you got to make you... You got to boil... Normally, I don't boil the water. I, there's there's water there out the, out the well. I would just drink it. Well, here, there's no well. You just got this shit and this bugs and crap. This is so horrible, and I didn't have the energy to boil my water, so I just passed out. Okay, so the next day, I'm walking around, you know, I'm still messed up, and I see this from a, they had some fishermen that guarded the island for other fishermen and said, hey, you can't come here, they're filming a show. Okay, well, I see he's got a bag of mangoes hanging in a tree, oh, and shit. I'm just doing my thing. I said, maybe if I, if I mope around this bag of mangoes, <laughs> What do you mean? Like mo like just like oh like yeah, with your lips out. Sad face. Like <laughs> stuck it in my stomach. I got my ribs showing. Right. I'm, I'm you just moping. So you walked Fucking around and around the mangoes. <laughs> yeah, and I'm kinda looking at the mangoes, looking pitiful. Well, the guy the little guy comes up, he says, uh he says, Hey, you want mango? I was like, Yeah, yeah, I want mango. He said, Okay, uh uh I said, what about the producer? Because on an Exile Island, they have a, one producer with, with, with a camera, and he had his own little spot. He said, uh, he said we're going to watch for him. So he goes to get his mangoes, and the producer starts walking down the freaking path. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. Shit. So we split our ways, right? He don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. We split ways. All right. So I, he's gone. I'm gone. I, I go up at the top. There is a lot of wind, so it's cooler in the day. At uh-huh. night, it's too windy, so you go down at night so during the day I'm, I'm up there I'm dying like I didn't have any water I had this horrible challenge that I had to go through for, for an hour I had a torn ACL I did I, I was really I said I have to rob the producer's tent and risk getting kicked off the show or I'm gonna <laughs> die and of course you can quit the show right at any time right. I'm not quitting the show yeah I'm either gonna die or I'm going to rob the producers and, and risk it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to sneak into this. You turn into a thief. And I'm going to steal something. Right. Whatever. So I start walking down this path. Right? It's a small path. I start walking down this highland. And, you know, it's 118 degrees in, in, in Fiji. Right. Right? I'm dying. Walking down this path. Literally dying. And this little mother humper walks out of the jungle and says, he's got a bag of mangoes. He said, hey, you want mangoes? I was like, yes. Yes, I, I said, mango. come back. He said, okay, meet, meet me at the top. Meet me at the top. And he disappears in the jungle. I'm like, thank the Lord. <laughs> oh, man, you, I wish I'm, we could find I'm this a... guy's name. Well, That's like too. some good I'll stuff right the there. Top. I'll walk up there, and I he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> of course. I wait 30 minutes. Nowhere to be found. I said, are you kidding? So I started walking. I said, motherfucker, I'm going to die. I got to look for the producer. I got to sneak to the back of his tank. And you can see the tent from the highland where I was at. So I'm right. walking down. I was like, if this mother humper comes out of the woods, I'm going to tackle his ass. <laughs> well, sure enough, this mother freaking Fiji fisherman comes out of the woods and says, hey, you want mangoes? I was like, yes, 
Yeah. Three mangoes. Yeah. He said, leave me at the top. I said, no. No, no. now. <laughs> he said, now. He said, he said, what about the producer? What about the seeds? I said, I'm going to bury the seeds that I was making Bay. hand gestures. Yeah, like, bury. I'm bury it underneath. He said, yeah. what about the peelings? I said, I'm going to eat the I'm going to eat the peelings. I'm going to eat the peelings. So he gave me the mangoes. I sneak up there like like they could see me, right? They couldn't see me. Right. But I'm I'm lying down at the top of the shack. Uh-huh. And I'm what is it, like a treehouse type mangoes, thing? Like, yeah, it's like the, it's, it's like kind of like an oil derrick. It's just a oh, okay. pitch. I got almost like a So uh, I'm, I'm laying down in this pitch, and I'm eating these mangoes like a fucking mad rat. How many did you get? And I ate. I got six. And they huge and juicy. And it's the best you ate ever. six mangoes? So I ate four. Huh? Oh, you ate four. What? Okay. I ate four. I kept two in my bag for when I got back. Because four, four were good. I was, I was Hell like, yeah. I'm alive. I'm fucking alive. So I'm, I'm rejuvenated. Holy shit, right? So I go back. I'm like happy to go lucky. I'm my life has changed. Right. I thought I was going to die or get kicked off the show. <laughs> right. And I'm not alive now. And I have energy. I'm full of sugar. I'm full of moisture. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm great. I go down <clears throat> and I see the crew change. It's another little guy and his uncle. And it's at night. And they walk up to me and they're like, hey. Uh, and they have this strong accent, but they still speak the Queen's English. Right. So they walk up and he's like, hey, you uh, you going to be here? You, oh, no. He said, are uh, you hungry? I said, I said yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, motherfucker. He, he said, you you want Coke? I said, Coca-Cola? He said, yeah, you want Coke? I said, you thought he meant yeah. drugs? I said, what about the producer? I said, what about the producer? Yeah. He said, my uncle's going to watch for him. Said, okay, uncle, okay. So he goes back, and I'm watching him from, from a little ways away, and he takes like two big scoops out of this big ice Oh, man, you had the best. Into a plate. I said, I said, oh, shit. He, I'm getting two big scoops of rice and curry. Oh, no. shit. He gives me the rest. He gives me the whole ice chest. They just took two scoops out for them. Holy shit. They bring shit. me this rice and curry and a, a, a Coke. Now, I don't only drink Diet Coke. Who gives a <laughs> shit, right? I'm drinking fucking <laughs> Coke, and I'm eating a bucket full of rice and a curry. A bucket full best of shit, rice. Best rice shit I've ever eaten. Yes. I'm it was like better dying. than I rice and from- gravy from your mom? Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm no. Dying. I'm eating a bucket of ice just full of rice and curry and Diet Coke. Damn. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Now, we had sent Earl to Exile Island like four times. Right. This is my first time. This little guy comes up to me. He says, hey, you know, you know, Earl, big black guy, big black guy. Oh, no, here. he's getting said, it, too. I said, yeah, that's my, I said, that's my buddy, Earl. He said, yeah, Earl, Earl. He said, he said, he, Hey, you coming back? I said, I Hell said, yeah. I don't know. I might come back. He said, he said, if you come back, we we'll get you big fish next time. Big fish. I said, Yeah. He said, Yeah, you come back, we we'll get you big fish. He said, We give Earl big fish all the time. Oh, said, oh no. my God, this motherfucker. Earl eating said, big fish. Earl, and he still didn't win Earl, a challenge. Earl, Earl, you eating big fish and you did, hey, I got it. I'm a tweet. Yeah. I, we got to tweet to Earl. Yeah, he. Hey. Earl yeah. would come back from, from Exile Island, and Jeff would ask him, so, how was Exile Island? And Earl would say, I'm stronger than ever, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I get back Big to fish. Island, and I said, Earl, I said, Earl, uh, how do you like Exile Island? He said, it's all right. I said, yeah, you ever eat beef fish on Exile Island? <laughs> he, said, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's my story about Exile Island. Oh, right man. There. Shoot, that's the a... The mango saved my life, and Earl got big fish. Oh, man. That, if that would happen, that, like, I think back, and, the, like, you're so hungry. You got to... We got to oh, find out... God. Wouldn't that be crazy? We could find out these these guys just wanted to help you guys. They knew y'all were hungry and they just wanted to feed you. That's pretty cool, though. Oh, yeah. You know? I went to. Well, I want another challenge. The dance they challenge, sneak in to feed you like you sneak to feed a hungry dog. Like yes, it's that's like it's what they so did. cool. That's yep. he that's good stuff. Through the jungle, the mango guy snuck through the jungle, dude. Walked through the jungle, 118 degrees, found me. Got nervous to meet him somewhere else, and he kept trying to find me. He were they me part of again. production? No, they were hired by by CBS uh-huh. to 
man the island because it was an island. You know, because Fiji is made up of I don't know two hundred something islands. So right. it's just people go and find an island and go fish on. That's their fishing spot. Well, these guys were here to say, hey, you can't use this fishing spot today, and they knew that they would get in trouble if they helped them or communicated with yeah. him. So he was risking his job, and I know he was a pauper, right? He didn't have no money. He right. was risking his job to, for me. So, yeah, they, they're they great people out there. These it, We did another challenge. Uh, they actually cried when we left. They Damn. cried. Yeah. I want to go back with Earl and a couple of friends. I want to go back, and I want to go see these people. I want to go... <laughs> Intermingle right. with them again. Okay, so that, that, that that's, that's cool. Goal. Hell yeah, man, okay. that's cool. Oh, so that's like on the bucket list now. Oh yeah, the return to Fiji. All right, this, if and, this, and, and if we, connect. if we start kicking ass, dude, we're going to Fiji. Me and you, we're gonna meet this guy. We're gonna do a podcast. We're gonna go to bucket full of rice and mangoes, and we're gonna do a podcast with this guy. Wouldn't it be crazy if we could find him? Actually, find him? That's impossible. You ain't gonna remember how he looks, though, are you? No, I couldn't find it, but you'd have to, yeah. It'd be really <laughs> hard. to get with CBS, CBS Records. Yeah. But no, the bucket list deal is to just go back, see, see, you know, my beach where I was at, and and give back to the community. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. We can do that. We'll do a podcast over there. That'd yeah. be fun. So uh, where's, yeah. where's you're at Tara's house? Yes. Where's she at right yeah. now? She's downstairs. She said we were boring. She did? Go downstairs. I know yeah, it might disconnect, but we need to talk to her. She, uh, she, okay, she, uh. Um, we're boring. I have to get off if my we're liquor. boring, then what well, the hell? She couldn't hear, she couldn't hear. My your, side. You're in. Yeah. So, so this is an old friend. Her name is Tara. I'm just going to put her on just for funsies. Just for funsies. She's an old friend. I was always into her when I was a kid. Like she was, I was like, really? She, oh, what? The Beck Nails? You kidding me? I turned me? her down. I, tur- I turned her down. Well, let's All of them. I remember do. Sarah turning me down. What the hell? Now, she, now she's let's, not. She likes Shannon. She likes Shannon. When of I course, was, everybody when likes I Shannon. I was the king of Survivor. I ki- hey, I, I, I'm just saying. I kissed. I kissed world? Tara once. Did you know that? Tara? No. Well, that's fine. No. Tara. Tara. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. So when I was king of Survivor, I want to talk. I want to talk about when we kissed. I'm gonna say. I want to say. I was king of Survivor. Is she, but I was king. Put of it on the phone. Our group, Tara. She might be in the bathroom. That's perfect. Perfect. I see the you can go up, up here. You can go up in there. I mean, it's like she's I'm going family. Up in, up in the shower. <laughs> yes, she is. Can we see in the shower? Why is put it, her on the phone? Why is it not video? Sarah. <laughs> she probably I mean, Tara. Tara. It's Sarah. Um. How do I put her on the phone? Just hand her the phone. Oh, just hand her the earpods. Hand her the earpods. Wait, I gotta get her. She's in the shower. That's fine. That's fine. I can't hand her. Maybe I can put her on speakerphone? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, put her on speaker. Hey. I'm killing both calls. Tara. What? Remember that one time at band camp? What? Remember that one time at band camp? Remember what? Put it closer to her. This is my private space. <laughs> what? <laughs> you you think you're gonna have private space when you're with us? Um. Yeah. Remember that one time we made out in bootleggers? No. <laughs> of I course. Oh yeah, well you didn't. You don't remember the one with me? Okay, all right. No, I'm sorry. I mean, I can find there it is. Okay, well we're gonna make that. We're gonna make that happen. <laughs> all right, get on. Get on. Right. Yeah, it's, it's hard to hear it there. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. We She's should. We, we're gonna put. We're gonna put like uh, subtitles down there at the bottom. So I could better say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so well, uh, uh, Shannon is her man. No, that was Sarah. Sarah. Oh, Sarah. 
But Sarah was all into you that one time, too. Sarah was into Shannon, too. Everybody's into Shannon. Well, Shannon's good looking, dude. How's Shannon doing right now Shannon's with his little marriage? I think her and Shannon. I think her and Shannon hooked it up. They both lied. Oh, you think now, they hooked it I'm up talking, and lied I'm about it? I'm talking about Shannon Elkins because he's married. I'm talking about another. Yeah, of Shannon. course. Yeah, Ken. We, we do not talk about marriage. Marriage. We want marriages to last. It's not. It's not that Shannon. It's the other one. No, it is. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's what happens with alcohol. <laughs> that's that's whining so, with wine. I should okay. That, yeah, that, actually, I mean, if it wasn't your 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 special guest, I would I wouldn't have told that. All right, story all right. Now we're no gonna whine. We it. haven't really well, we whined about a few things, but we haven't really whined about one specific thing. Now I need I know what yours is. I'm gonna bring it up because you probably don't know what I'm talking about here. You are not getting another shot at Survivor. I want you to whine to Lynn Spillman right now. Why do you deserve a shot? Because well, you were boring, dude. The first okay. time you played, I felt no. like I was watching an interview. No, 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 no. The edit was boring. And I... Oh, Sarah wants to say one thing. Oh, no, she's going to have to wet. put the hold earphones on. on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep that in. Hold on. Hold on. We can't hardly on. hear her. I oh, know. Hold on. Yeah. We're crazy. Okay. Tara's going to yes, talk. We are. Tara's going to talk. She's naked. She's in a towel. Go ahead, Tara. Tara? Can you hear me? Okay, Tara, how you doing? Hey, I want you to know that Boo himself would have never just walked through my bathroom with me in the shower and put a phone over the shower. Because I'm boring. But because of you, and that's how convincing you are, uh -huh. he just did that. Bam. If you put us together, we're trouble. Bam. That just happened. Well, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Drowned rat. But, she but came you... out here. She came out here pissed off looking like a drowned rat. Just to tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Boo would have never that's done that without you convincing him to do that. <laughs> that that's Does she true. not know? I mean, she don't. She, does she not know us by now? Give me a break. <laughs> hey, so that's why we should be on Survivor together. Oh, I that would be crazy. You. I could save you. Okay, so I'm going to wind the wind Spillman. Wind the wind Spillman. Wind the wind Spillman because I'm going to tag her. Why okay, should you, so, Boo? You because you was bo do you agree you were boring the first season? Are you no, are you blaming editing like the rest of them? Are you serious? My interviews were boring because I was yes they were because I was trying to show I was intelligent I was highly educated I didn't want other oh, people wow. shut it there I I didn't want people to think I was uneducated right uh -huh. but my end game was not boring at all they actually came up to me and said. Wow, you are such a live character in the game. Why don't you bring that same energy to the interviews? And my thought was, because I didn't really watch the show before, right. my thought was, I'm, I'm in a Fortune 500 interview. I want people to think I'm intelligent. Oh, really? I don't want people to think I'm gonna gonna talk about people about that behind sucks. their back. No, now I tell you, I tell everybody that goes, I say, listen. You make the producers be your best friend. The, the guys that are filming you, be, they're your best friends. You talk to them like you talk to, like, like if you're having a couple of drinks and you right. just crack and it you know what people. I tell You know what I tell people now? I understand. I learned. Yeah, when I help want, people, I, I use that too. I use that too, and I tell them this is not an interview because of that. Yeah. And and it's like if you if I'm sitting here talking with Russell – if I'm sitting there talking with Willie, I'm having a blast. I'm being myself. I'm being that character in game that they loved in the interviews. I didn't bring that to the table the first time. But Lynn should know by the characters I, I, I have gotten for her. She knows if I bring somebody, there's someone to look at. I don't know, she man. She knows that. We might make this mainstream. We might make this interview what? mainstream. Where 20,000 people story, hear it. What? We'd have to edit out, out the story. You anyway, can't edit out the that's story. That's my wine. We don't that's edit here. Yeah, well, well, let, listen. well so, could you play again? I mean, could you? If you had one shot and Lynn was in front of you, she's listening now. What are you going to say? Bitch. I'm eight mile in that bitch. This eight, is, eight mile that bitch. This, Do it now. I should be on the show. Tell me. I'm Lynn. I got one shot. I'm Lynn. Eight, eight mile that okay. bitch. I'm Lynn. I, Tell me. What you interview got? Interview me. Okay. You bring All right. me well, everything boo. you got. Okay, here, here, you here I'm Lynn. Every reason why I suck. All right, I'm Lynn. Okay. Well, well, boo, 
You were really boring the first time you played. You're not nearly as pretty as, as you used to be, Lynn. <laughs> oh, that, that ain't going to oh, work you. look for like you. Russell. No, you look like Russell. Is yeah, what I'm that won't work for you. But oh. you're not. It won't work because. No, I know. Yeah. Because she. I know. She, yeah. she doesn't care about flattery. No. Anyway. No, she okay, don't. This is this is my pitch to Lynn. Lynn, okay. for one, I understand my shortcomings. I understand mm -hmm. why you didn't like me, which okay. was I failed you in the interview uh, process. But I had such you great hope for you. And you I had such great hope for you. Right. I was. And you pissed me show. off. I failed you. I should have. But look at my track history after that. I got you, Russell. I got you, James. I got you, uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, Colton. Mm -hmm. I got you. These polarizing figures. Yes. I know what you want, which is right. me. These people are me. They're uh, they're an extension of me. But I'm also smarter than these people. What? I came in thought it and thought that I should be a smart, intelligent person in the interviews. I've learned from those mistakes. I learned that I need to be myself in the interview. That's where you get that's where you get sound bites from. That's what you need from me. You need me, not in the game. That's up to me. Where you need me is in the interviews. You need me in the private interview. If you can't see that I know that that's what you need. Look at the characters that got you. You think they just randomly showed up? Mm -hmm. Two you, two time favorites by the way. On the show. She's gotten people on the show a second time by saying they were young. They really didn't know. I wanted to see how they matured. I thought they could mature and do well after they matured. Yeah, I know. If you don't see me, boo, super boo. Super the character boo. during the show, that was great. That The camera production would follow me like crazy to see if I would screw something up. Mm -hmm. They loved me. Right. The only issue there is with Boo Burnus, with Super Boo, that won 17 fucking challenges. 17. More challenges than anyone ever in the history of Survivor. Mm -hmm. The only issue is he went away in the interviews. I understand that. I know production values. I know I'm allowed to She knows, to man. She knows. They I'm know that that's myself. not you. I can tell a story. I'm going to be myself in an interview. No, she doesn't know that. She doesn't. She knows I understand. She thinks I'm a player who can be a coach. I, I can't really be that great player, but I can coach great players. I'm not that. I am a great player. Right. I am phenomenal. You phenomenal? But I played it wrong. Where are you right now? I feel like I need to be over there right now. I'm in Tara Becknell's bed, <laughs> in her bed. She's in her shower naked. <laughs> naked. Thinking about Russell. Oh, Hayes by the way, uh, let's talk about, let's just say who the Beck, let's introduce the Becknells. There's Damon Becknell. The, who, who's Daddy? Daddy Becknell? Tom. 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 Why didn't, I'm stupid. So there's Tom Becknell that's worth how much? Boo? That's not the first time. How much? What? is he? How much is he worth? I don't know. I, I don't know, but his last project which is his current project he uh it was a 500 million dollar project so would you say he's worth that 500 million i'd say he could liquidate and get to that yeah yeah and damon 20 million 20 30 million it, it's it's hard to say tara it's hard to say three four million i don't know we should ask know. her he told me if he did his one deal um now, he hasn't done it, but there's one deal he's got on the table that he's just waiting to pull the trigger on. Right. I think he can make $60 million on. We need to do a Survivor. They won't do it. David doesn't want to be on TV. No, we like need to do, things. like, he needs to be the, uh, the like, uh, Mark Burnett and bring a Survivor to where you have, uh, you know, you have uh, King of the Island. That's what you can call it. See, I just came well, up. I just came I, up with that. I always, I, I thought Survivor would have ended a long time ago. So what I, what, what, what I wanted to do was do this big legends type of deal because you, and you know a lot more than I do, but I know a couple of the big dogs too. So with your connections, if Survivor dude, I can get ended, legends of Big Brother and Survivor on an island. Whatever it is, we could do that and do an internet show. It costs about two million dollars for the production. We could find that money easily and have we could sell you know ten or fifteen dollar memberships to watch yeah. it on you know iTunes or whatever. Right. So 
So well, that would work. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, so you what y'all got going you, on you tonight? Thirty million dollars. I thought you were there with a girl. If I had. I thought you were there with a girl. I, she left. She left you. She went home. Yeah. She Why? Left. It what, was just. Are you dating her? She was here with a family. Is it your girlfriend? Uh, uh, and you're walking in other girls' like showers and shit? We like, well, that's like my sister. You kissed her, not me. Nah, we kissed like brother and sister, though. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like, it was like a, you know, hey, goodbye type of kiss. Yeah. That well, one time. How long has this show been going on so far? I don't want to bore your viewers. Oh, no. Oh, you mean that? Yeah, we're going to have to go in a little bit. We ain't even going to talk about the fight. We got the fight. We'll talk we'll about that. that. We'll do that in another episode. Yes, we, we've we been rolling for an that. hour and 15 I have, minutes. I also have a, a experience in that world. Right. So. Oh, yeah. By the way, people don't know that you are what uh, pro. You got your pro card in MMA, and you're 6-0, and right? Yep. And you boxed? I'm, uh, I'm 6-0 and in MMA, but I'm, I'm 3-0 and in pro events. I didn't have an extended pro career. Oh, I because, see. Yeah. Uh, Survivor came into my life. In the middle, in the middle of my, my mix, okay. Mix so what we'll do week. is because it is going on quite a bit, and I don't like to go too much over an hour. But what we'll do is mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll talk about that that and the fight with Mayweather and Conor McGregor uh, because you've did yeah. both sports. So you'll come on again, and uh, we'll talk about that. But right now it is getting I have a little, some distinct it's getting a little long. Ideas about that too. Uh, Y'all in Destin right now, or Lafayette? Yes. Destin. Destin. So. Yes. I should be, dude, I should be there. I mean, all I got to do now is the podcast. I could be there right in the house doing the podcast. I don't know why you're not here. I don't know. I never, I nobody to told me. Involved. Nobody told me I nothing. I always invite you. I always you didn't invite, invite me this time. Because it was a quick trip, but I've invited you so many times. You said you're busy, you're, you're Mr. Survivor, and you have too many fans, and you can't come. So I was like, well. Mr. Survivor. Invite. We need to do like a Mr. Our, Survivor. Like really quick. Before we get off, all right. What you got? When Shannon was here, okay, so it was me. Shannon from I Survivor, just right? Off of Survivor. I had just gotten off of Survivor. Okay. Shannon from Survivor. Okay. Russell from Survivor. Right. Willie. Okay. I think Willie was here. Where was brother. this? So none of y'all have done. Y'all didn't do anything. I was the king. I was the guy on Survivor, <laughs> and y'all all got on after me. <laughs> Lynn spilled it. Right. How does this happen? If I don't fucking have a clue about production, I understand, and I don't have to go out and pretend in the interviews. I just have to go out and be who I Boo. am. This is what we do. Just call me when you're a little drunker I'm a tonight. She Listen, she loves me. Lynn loves me in her heart. Then we'll do another she podcast, knows. man. You know. We might make this mainstream. Okay. I think we might make this mainstream, even with the stories. I don't know. And then, and okay. then we'll do another one. Call me later today, and we'll do that one for the patrons. Call me later tonight when you're drunk and Tara's drunk. And we'll do one like a, a three-way. <laughs> a three-way like old times. <laughs> a three-way. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm All just right, talking so about on the on the phone. You know, you got a dirty Lynn mind. Spielman, dirty boy. Dirty you boy. You promised me that at season 57 you would put me on. I think you should put me she on did, before though. then. She did say that. She, she won't. Look, all I ask We'll call Lynn, it. Boo, Spielman, we'll do this again. When you're drunker, go out, have a good time. I'm serious. Let's do it again tonight. Okay. We'll do a whining all with I'm wine later tonight. Spielman, and this will be needs, mainstream. All I for an interview. This will be for everybody. I want an interview. Just, he just wants an I interview, want Lynn. Her he just wants Mark an interview. One-on-one -on -one in Lynn, an interview. Two -on -one. Just give the boy an interview already. Like, uh, for God's sakes, give the boy an I'll interview. Fly, <laughs> I'll fly myself in. He'll pay I'll, for everything. Yeah. Okay. That's all I ask. We All got... I've done for you, <laughs> I want an interview, and I'll fly myself in. Okay. Right, sign off, Russell Hans. Okay, that's it. Then we, I'm going to call you back, and uh, I'm telling you, we'll probably go mainstream. 20,000 people are going to hear this, and then we'll do the uh, whining with wine for our Patreons tonight. But we can't do that if you don't call tonight. Like, we got to be drunk okay. tonight, okay? That's fine. I'm, right. I'm buzzing. All right, and t Tara, too. So get Tara ready. <laughs> All right. She's always drunk. All right, I'll talk to you later.
Well, thanks for listening to Whining with Wine with Boo. We'll be bringing him on for another Whining with Wine for our Patreons only. So make sure to become a patron so you can hear it. We got more great shows coming your way soon. Subscribe and download, and thanks for your support. I'm Russell Hance, and this is The Russell Hance Show.